Hey everybody, I'm Maddie from the Northern Rockies Museum and this week as part of the Learning Railway in conjunction with the Hinton Municipal Library for the TD Summer Reading Program, we are going to be spinning our own yarn from wool. <laughs> So I'm really excited today to show you guys about spinning your own yarn uh, and we're actually going to be making a pretty cool bracelet after from all of our hard work. Um, so I'm wearing my bracelet here from the yarn that I spun on my drop spindle. And so you guys should all have a little package here. Um, if you don't have one of these packages, uh, you can go on to our uh, Teachers Pay Teachers site and check out the supplies that you'll need to complete this project. So we are going to be working with alpaca fiber today. And so I have a bunch of alpaca fiber here, and this is the same alpaca fiber that's in the kits if you did pick up a kit. And so this is straight off the alpaca. The alpaca's name is Paco, um, which is funny because the scientific name of alpacas is Paco Paco. So I'll play on words there. So uh, alpacas have um, different type of fur fiber than a sheep does. So alpacas have fiber on their bodies and sheep have wool. And fiber is closer to hair like the half stuff that you have on your head than wool is. Um, alpaca fiber is also a lot lighter and stronger than sheep wool is, and it does repel water rather than absorb it like wool does. So it's, uh, it's really good for a lot of things. It can be a little more difficult to work with at times, um, but you guys are gonna be uh, champs at this by the end of this class today. So here is all of my wool and the very first thing that you would do is after you shear your alpaca off um, you would wash all of your fiber. So this is pretty much right off the alpaca. We skip the, the washing stage but we do need to card our wool or our fiber rather uh, so the stuff that you guys have in your bags has already been carded. I did that on our fancy drum carder here. And what you're doing when you're carding is you're aligning all of the fibers in one direction so that they'll spin and twist better. You're just kind of brushing it out. So if we look here, I have this right here. These are some, uh, some paddle carders here. Um, so very simple here is you take your your uh, brushes and you'd add a bit of your fiber onto them and you would just start to brush them out like this and we're trying to get the fibers all to go into one direction brushing them out nice like that that takes a lot of time though so we are going to use our fancy drum carter here, and that's this guy here. So this is a drum carter, and it makes life a lot easier. So uh, all we do is we take some of our wool here, and I'm just gonna take some of this. And these two drums have lots of little tiny teeth on them, and they're gonna comb all of our fibers into one direction and make a bat of fiber for us. So I'm just gonna turn this, and it is a lot of work. I got a good workout making all of your guys' bats for you. Once you get uh, all the fibers brushed out that are on there, you're going to add some more fiber into your drum carter here. So I have a full bat on my large drum here and now I'm going to pull it off. So I've got it here and now I can just take this fiber and I'm just going to kind of roll it down. Oops. There it is. All right, 
right, so we've got now this nice big bat of nicely a brushed fiber and you can see that all of the fiber is going in one direction now which is going to make this so much easier when we start to work with it on our drop spindle. Uh, so I'm probably going to run this through the drum carter one more time just to make sure that it's all been nicely brushed out and then we'll be ready for our drop spindle. So here is my bat that I have, my batting here. So um, after uh, you have made your bat, this is something that could go in the middle of a quilt. So a long time ago, quilts didn't have uh, synthetic fibers or man-made fibers on, in the inside of it. It would just be all wool like this. Um, so you would just use your drum carter and make various bats to go on the inside of your quilt. But today we are going to be turning this into yarn using our drop spindle. So what I need you guys to do is roll out your bat so that it's all nice and flat like this. And we're going to uh, split it up into sections or uh, rovings um, to start with the uh, process of turning it into yarn. So you're just going to want to take kind of a a section off of the top here and we're just gonna pull down like this so we've got kind of a chunk here and I'm just gonna kind of keep doing that we want to be gentle we want to make sure we don't get it all nice and knotted up again after it's all been nicely brushed so just pull that all out there so I'm just gonna have these two um, for now Great. Next thing you'll need to do is to get your drop spindle out from your kit. And the drop spindle is really easy to make if you're at home. It's simply a piece of dowel with a hook screwed in at the top. And then I've cut a piece of coroplast plastic. I've put a cross or an X shape in the middle of it. And I've also cut I'm a line down on this side here and it all makes sense in a minute. So you're going to take your drop spindle, your dowel here, and you're gonna stick it through that X shape. Like that. And we're gonna push it up so that it's near the top, just like that. And that's really it. That's all we need to do to start. So I'm gonna take my one roving here and I am going to, I'm going to start making my yarn. So I am going to very gently pull on the fibers, very, very, very gently. Pull on the fibers like that until I get a size of yarn that I want. I think that's pretty good. And I'm just going to Spin it right now. It's gonna twist it up like this. So as we're twisting the yarn, we're making it really strong. So if you pull now, it's not gonna come apart. I'm pulling very hard. But if I was to pull on the yarn or the fiber rather without it being twisted, it's going to come apart like this one did. So Let's try this again. We're gonna just spin this. And this is the start of our yarn here. So spin it. I think that's pretty good. Pull on it, it seems pretty tight. And so we're gonna take this and we're going to hook it onto the end of our drop spindle. And we're just gonna twist these two pieces together here. The end all nice up. So you should have your fiber is all twisted onto your drop spindle like this. So I've just grabbed a marker and I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. And you guys should too. You should always, whoops, you should always make sure that your yarn, when you're spinning it, 
you're spinning, spinning in the same direction. And so I'm going to draw an arrow in the direction that I am always going to be spinning so that I know um, I'm going the right way. Because if you go in the opposite direction, you're gonna unwind your yarn. So I'm just going to spin this up again here, just like that. I'm going to slowly go up my, my fiber here and I'm going to spin some more. So once you get to a part where uh, you have reached all your twisting, you need to ju then just pull some more on your um, fiber, stretch it out a little bit like this, and you are going to spin again and make sure that you are, whoops, And make sure that you are spinning in the same direction and I'm gonna spin just like my arrow told me to it's my drop spindle so I've got a really long piece of yarn here it's getting too much for me to work with so I'm gonna start wrapping it up so what you do is you find that little slit that was in your piece of coroplast and you're gonna slide your yarn down into that like that and you're gonna wrap your yarn underneath the piece of coroplast just like that leave a little bit out about this much out and you're gonna go through that uh, slice in the coroplast again and then up and around your hook and then you can start start again with your uh, spinning so I'm gonna pull some more out here pull some more I'm just going to spin again So I usually spin it until it starts to turn in the other direction. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to spin it and it started turning the other way. So I'm going to stop it right there and we're going to go again. We'll do some more here. So I'm just going to pull gently, pull gently and we'll try again. And when you guys are doing this at home, uh, you can um, do this um, more on the ground. I'm doing it like this so you can see, which is making it a little more difficult. Um, but I've got a good chunk here again, so I am going to pull it off from here and I'm gonna wrap it underneath my spindle part here. and repeat the process. So what would happen if you ripped your fiber? So let's say you pulled it too hard on here. So I'm just gonna pull, 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 pull. Oh no. It's broken apart now and I still have all this fiber to work with. Should I stop my spinning now? Nope, you can rejoin them together. So I'm just gonna take this end here. I'm gonna take this end. I'm gonna join them together and I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a twist. Like that and we'll twist them together with our spindle. And just like that, it is one piece of yarn again. I finished off that first bit of fiber that I had so it's all spun underneath here uh, and I am now going to 
set this yarn so that it doesn't unravel because if we were to spin this all out again uh, it would all unravel and then just become individual fibers again and we don't want that so what we're going to do is we're going to hold on to this one end and we are going to wrap it over this core plast piece that we have here just like this in those little grooves there make sure you don't lose the end that's important and we're just going to wrap all of our yarn on this um, piece here got my two ends here and now I'm just going to tie them together at the top there make sure you don't lose this knot that's important great so now we've got all of our yarn on our um, piece of plastic here and now we're going to uh, put this into some hot water, not boiling water, but hot water for about 15 minutes. So I pulled out my soggy kind of gross yarn from the water. As you can see, it's all dripping here. And I'm going to take it off of my piece of plastic here. So pretty easy. You just kind of need to bend it um, and pop it over like that. Great. And now, oops. And now we've got some soggy, soggy yarn. So what we're going to do, just to kind of do another finishing touch on it, is we're gonna kind of slap it around a little bit. So you're gonna hold it like this, and you're gonna, and then pull it out a little bit, and do it again. And we're just gonna keep doing that. And again, it's just kind of setting the fibers a bit more inside, and it's lots of fun. So it's looking pretty good. So I am going to cut the uh, where the knot is here. Um, so you guys can get a pair of scissors. And I'm just going to cut this or you can untie it. There. And just to make sure that I did this right, I want to make sure that my yarn isn't going to untwist on me. And so if I hold it up, oops, if I hold it up, does it spin around? Nope, it stays in place. And that's exactly what we want to do. We don't want it spinning around because then it's gonna untwist. So it looks like this is pretty good. Oh, I got a clump there. But pull this all out. Great, so we've got some yarn that we can do something with. So we're actually going to make a bracelet right now. So what we need to do to make our bracelet is we're going to fold our yarn in half. Fold your yarn in half about here. And then this is a little tricky here. We are going to fold about two thirds of our yarn like this. Let me just cut this end off. We don't need this. So you should have, there's a folded part down here and there's a fold up here and you've got, should have kind of four lines coming down off of this one here, just like that. So this is going to be the start of our bracelet. So we are going to tie a knot up at this point right here. So I'm gonna take this, this loop, and I'm just going to tie it around in a knot. You can get your help from uh, your guardian there to do that. We wanna make sure that there's a bit of a loop left. We don't wanna tie it tight because that loop is gonna hold our bracelet together at the end. So I've got a bit of a loop here like that and then what we need to do is we need to cut this end right here we don't need it um, folded we need it to be separate so you should have four separate pieces of string on here that are tied together too short and too long 
And so to start on our bracelet, we're actually gonna come back to this piece of plastic. And there should be a cut on the side of this plastic right there. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that knot and you are gonna slide that knot in there so that it's held in place for you, just like that. And now we're gonna switch views so that you can watch my hands do it a little better. So we're gonna go and uh, have an aerial view. So I just grabbed some tape and you can tape down uh, this piece so it's not moving around. That might make it a little easier for you. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put our two shorter strings in the middle of our two longer strings. So I'm pulling the long strings off to the side, ooh, like this. And then I've got my two shorter strings in the middle. Let me just pull them apart so you can see there, like this. So the first step is we're gonna take the string on the right and we're going to place it over top of the middle strings, placing it over top of the middle strings. We're gonna take our left string, we're gonna place it over the right string. So it's over top. We're gonna put it under the middle string. So I'm going under the middle strings and then through this hole. Make sure you go under the hole under that hole and then we're going to pull it tight okay so that is our first knot done so now we just need to keep doing that so we're going to put our right string over our two middle strings we're going to put our left string over that right string under the middle strings and under and through the right string. And then we're going to pull. So we'll do this a couple more times. So right string over the middle two, left string over the right one, under the middle and through, under and through this hole. And we're going to pull. We're just gonna keep doing this. So oh, I want to add a bead onto my bracelet just like I have on this one that I'm wearing right now. So you guys should find some beads at the bottom of your kit. So I'm going to put the bead through the two middle strings and it might be a little difficult so I find the best way to get the bead on is to fold the, sh the pieces of yarn in half and then you're going to stick those little bits into your bead and then take a pencil or something pokey and then poke the yarn through your bead and then you'll just pull it out on the other side and pull oops make sure you get both of them we've got both of them great and so we're gonna do exactly like we did before but around the bead so we're gonna go over 
the two middle pieces with their right one. The left one's going to go under the right one, under the middle, and up and through this loop here. Great. So now you can keep making your bracelet on from there. So I'm not gonna go all the way with my bracelet here. I am gonna just finish this and use it maybe as a little bit of a keychain, but I wanna show you guys what to do if you do wanna make it into a bracelet like the one that I'm wearing right now. So you'd wanna take it off of your piece of plastic here. And you'd wanna make sure that it's long enough for your wrist. They do stretch out quite a bit because this was tight to my wrist. Um, yesterday so you want to wrap it around your wrist make sure it's pretty tight there so you want to make sure that you have um, your um, knot all the way to right to your loop on the other side and you're gonna hold that with your finger you're gonna make a knot right there so let's pull all these through make a really good knot and then make another knot in the exact same spot. So it's really big. Like that. And now you can just cut that. And then to wear the bracelet, you just put your knot through your loop that you made earlier. Uh, and that's, that's it. So I'm just gonna put that through. And there's our bracelet that we were working on. Pretty good. And here's my one from the other day. Thanks guys so much for watching this edition of the Learning Railway for the TD Summer Reading Program. I hope you learned lots about making yarn. Uh, imagine all the work that goes into making a sweater or a scarf if you are starting right from the fiber right off of the animal all the way to knitting or crocheting that scarf or sweater. It's a lot, a lot of work. Uh, and I'm sure that you understand that now after having to make your own yarn from a drop spindle. There are other different types of ways of spinning yarn that are spinning wheels and you can check those out online if you do a quick search for that uh, and there's also different types of fiber that you can spin or wool that you can spin as well in fact there are some plants in our local area uh, that you can spin um, so the seeds of a fireweed plant which we talked about last week making tea they get quite fluffy and you can use that fluff very delicately to uh, spin. Uh, it's very difficult, but you can do it. You can also use the hair from uh, big fluffy dogs. Uh, you can make that into yarn as well, which is pretty cool. And all the different types of fiber and wool have different properties. So you guys, now that you have your very own drop spindle, you can uh, test out some different things and see if you can spin it yourself. Just kind of a neat challenge. If you watch this video, please let me know in the comments below so we can enter into the draw with the Hinton Municipal Library for the TD Summer Reading Program. There's some great prizes and the grand prize is going to be drawn in just a couple of weeks. We only have one more class left which is pretty sad, um, but that is quill making and book binding, and that one's gonna be lots of fun. We're using real goose feathers for that one that have been locally sourced, just like this alpaca fiber was, and thanks to the Lehman Exchange for giving us this fiber to do that. If you have any questions about spinning wool, please come to the museum. I will have the drum carter here for uh, a couple of weeks so you guys can come and test it out to yourself and test out the paddle carting as well uh, and see how good you are. It takes a lot of effort to do it. I know I got a great workout when I was carting your guys' wool. Thanks again for joining us on the Learning Railway and we hope to see you back next time.